Chorus Voices, the podcast brought to you by Chorus, a fresh approach to community service. Settle in, listen in, and enjoy the voices who bring you reflections, musings, and stories from our community. Hello and welcome to this episode of Chorus Voices. I am CEO Dan Minchin. And I'm Head of Brand and People, Lou Forster. Welcome, Dan. Thank you very much, Lou. Now, what is on the menu today? (laughs) Very good question. What is on the menu today is a conversation about food and nutrition. Um, So we have got a few services and approaches to supporting people in the community that centre around food. And of course, you know, nutrition is a very important part of the food that we eat. And we've spoke to a couple of people across Chorus, as we like to do on Chorus Voices. Um, the first person we spoke to was um, Frances Sheehan, who's one of our uh, assessors. And her, her role is going out to the community, talking to mainly seniors about um, what kinds of support they might need to mm-hmm. stay living at home. And you know, one of those um, areas that we talk to people about is you know, how they're going and what they're eating and their nutrition. And we'll hear from Francis in a minute. It, it is interesting now. We talk a lot about food on Chorus Voices and actually I think uh, talk a lot about food at Chorus. And I think it probably goes back to, um, you know, obviously eating and um, and having nutrition is a, um, a critical uh, factor in, in life, but it really has become for um, for people and humans for um, eons um, very much about the, the, the unit, the family unit, the neighbourhood unit, uh, the social connection and the social um, interaction that goes in and around food and really becomes as part of people's identity and uh, yeah it, it kind of stimulates all sorts of reactions and responses when you start talking about um, about what role foods played in in their, in their lives and how food connects to yeah people I remember reading a, a book called flow and uh, I can't pronounce the um, author's name it's right. a really really long name we'll Italian in name we'll put it in the notes <laughs> But um, he talks about when we're in this peak flow, you know, so if you're a musician or some kind of an artist or mm. really, really involved in what you're doing, it's like uh, everything suspends around you, including, you know, the need to eat. And my mum definitely had that. She would mm. she would do sewing or gardening all day long and then realise that she hadn't eaten Prepared. all day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right. And I think uh, what, what there's lots of evidence to show that as people get older, they um, tend to spend less time preparing food. They uh, sometimes... Uh, people lose their uh, their appetite, whether it's um, because they don't taste and smell as well as they used to, or just because uh, you know cooking for one or cooking for two is not quite as inspiring as it used to be. And people then lose confidence, and the thing kind of um, can go downhill from there. So um, that's got a, two really important consequences. One of which is, as we've talked about, the tendency to become uh, less involved in food preparation and food eating, and which has a social kind of impact. But also at its um, very basic, uh, there's a nutritional question. And that's where we uh, started in our conversation with Francis. So tell me, Francis, what are the key nutrients that seniors need? Definitely um, calcium and vitamin D to maintain bone health. If seniors can aim for three serves of of calcium rich food per day and um, of course vitamin D is from the sun um, so exposure to sunlight. Fibre rich foods are another one um, which are fantastic they help keep you regular um, and they uh, fibre also lowers the risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Um, vitamin B12 is, is another one um, that's really important and many people um, as they get older they tend to um, lose the ability to absorb vitamin B12. Signs of deficiency include um, anemia, um, nerve nerve problems like tingling and num- numbness and um, poor memory. Um, so good sources of vitamin B12 are your fortified cereals, lean meat, dairy and seafood like your clams, your mussels um, and crab. And omega-3 fatty acids are another another fantastic one and they've got a wide range of benefits, um, particularly anti-inflammatory. Um, so they're great for reducing the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Um, They also help with um, macular degeneration and and Alzheimer's disease. Um, So if people can aim for two serves of fish per week, oily fish like your salmon, your tuna and your sardines, that's fantastic. And vegetable sources also, um, walnuts, flat seeds and and avocados, another great one. Potassium is also another really good one um, for strong bones and helps reduce um, high blood pressure and your, your fruits and veg are fantastic. Bananas and also your prunes, plums and potatoes with their skin on, really great sources of potassium. It's a great list you got there. <laughs> um, so how many kilojoules 
should a person, say, over 70 be consuming? Yeah, sure. Um, so a sedentary male over 70 requires about 2,000 calories, which is 8,368 kilojoules. Um, and if, if they're active, 2,600 um, calories. Um, and for a female over 70, you'd be looking at between 1,600 to 2,000 calories per day, depending on whether um, sedentary or, or active. So should food be considered as a preventative health care? Absolutely. Good nutrition is the cornerstone of good health. Um, it promotes health, health and well-being, but it also reduces the risk of diet-related conditions such as hypertension, um, so high blood pressure, high cholesterol um, be, and being overweight and obese. And it also reduces the risk of the chronic diseases, so like your cardiovascular disease, um, heart disease, stroke, um, type 2 diabetes and, and even some cancers. Are there any red flags that might show that someone isn't getting their nutritional requirements? Definitely. Um, so a loss of appetite is a big one um, and, and any digestive issues that people may have. Also sudden um, weight fluctuations, particularly weight loss, um, losing weight quickly in a short period of time. Uh, skin tone is another one. Um, skin should look should look healthy, have a good colour to it, be well hydrated. Um, and also uh, mental health plays a part there as well. So any cognitive problems, any depression, um, if people are lethargic, um, that can definitely affect their nutrition as well, as can recent illness. So often when people, um, particularly seniors, have been unwell and, and possibly been in hospital, it may not be getting the nutrients they need. So should seniors be taking supplements like vitamins? Ideally we should get our nutrients from our food, that's ideal, but many older adults do find that difficult to follow a healthy diet due to lots of reasons, poor appetite being one of them um, possibly. Supplements can help fill gaps in, in our diet. Um, I always recommend people to speak to their GP first um, before starting a a supplement and also choosing a multivitamin um, that provides 100% of the recommended amounts of vitamins and minerals um, as some vitamins and minerals can um, be toxic if taken in excess. What about salt? Yeah so the average Australian consumes almost double the amount of salt they need for good health um, and Australian adults um, should aim to consume no more than 2,000 milligrams of sodium per day which is about one teaspoon of salt um, in order to prevent prevent chronic, chronic disease. Adults over 51, so um, older, older adults, um, should further reduce their sodium intake to um, 1,500 milligrams, which is about three quarter teaspoon per day. Um, and high salt intake, it, it, it raises your blood pressure, um, which can cause a lot of other issues, um, such as kidney disease, heart disease, stroke, that kind of thing. And, and salt, most salt comes from processed foods, um, so processed packaged Food. So yeah, ideally avoid if, if possible. So does someone living with dementia have special nutritional requirements? Uh, nutritional requirements are, are pretty similar to other people of their age, though research has found that a uh, high intake of vegetables, um, your legumes, so your, your lentils, chickpeas, etc, um, colourful fruits and unsaturated fatty acids like your avocado, your nut seeds and your oily fish have been um, found to, to protect against cognitive decline and the same same with um, your antioxidants like your vitamin E um, which is found in nut seeds and your green leafy vegetables as well as folate and vitamin C also really good in reducing the risk of Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and further preventing yeah. that progression. So can professionals like dietitians, speech pathologists or occupational therapists play a role in assisting seniors with nutritional needs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a dietitian provides expert nutrition advice for people of all ages um, and they prescribe dietary treatments for a, a wide range of conditions, um, including digestive issues, food allergies, type 2 diabetes um, and obesity. Speech pathologists are a fantastic um, in assisting with dysphagia, so any any um, swallowing problems, um, difficulty swallowing, and that can certainly lead to poor nutrition um, and dehydration as well. So speech pathologists may recommend um, changes to the textures of foods and drinks um, and provide exercises and, and techniques to help people swallow safely. And occupational therapists are wonderful in, in enhancing patients' functional independence so they can help people eat healthy food um, by assisting with meal planning, um, shopping and preparing well-balanced meals. 
So the big lesson I take out of what Francis was talking about is just to to be aware. And if, I guess if you've um, you've got an older relative or older friend, uh, it's worth keeping in mind the possibility that they may um, not be getting as much joy out of food as they used to, and and therefore may not be getting as much nutrition as they require. Taking a bit of a record of what's going on, and and then a conversation with the GP, and and onwards from there. Yeah, I think having conversations about you know, what someone's eating and how they're uh, finding that process is um, a really good start. And ma- and maybe um, you know thinking about practical steps you can take. I, I recall um, thinking about my grandparents who have now passed away. Um, as time went on, you know, food and and eating at their house was always a thing, and it became less and less. Uh, frequent as my grandparents got older and were felt less able to to cater, um, and so sort of it, it, what what had been a really big part of their lives clearly became less part of their lives. And maybe a practical thing that that I could have done or, or we could do now is to is to ensure that those um, kind of events still happen in some form, even if it's not relying on your uh, your elderly grandparent to prepare for fifteen people. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And we've we've talked about before in in the uh, podcast about. You know, ritual and um, and things that really kind of ignite memories. I, th- I think food's really one of those. So if mm. if it's someone that's getting older, you know, talking about what foods um, give them a sense of joy. You know, what foods they remember cooking or, or eating. Or mm. you know, food's just so linked to uh, culture and memory. And um, yeah, it is. Cult- it's, it's so many. And, and, and you know, as we talk about, it, it's, it's sort of more than a meal. And you see that ritual being repeated across the chorus in lots of different ways. Um, you go to some of our activities, uh, whether they're organised uh, indoors or with their barbecues on the a- outdoors, or we're getting people involved in preparing food or consuming food and doing that together in a in a sort of celebratory or, or, or ritualistic kind of way. Um, it very much is um, a part of the the chorus life, I guess. Mm, definitely, I um, spend a bit of time at um, our house, um, mm, mm. which is one of the day centres we have down in um, Mandra Mandra yeah. Way, mm. and uh, Sandy does a lot of cooking down. There, she often works on a Tuesday. Her nickname's Girl Tuesday, right? <laughs> and just you know, that's a seniors group, and um, very much you know involved with the seniors in menu planning and making sure you know nutrition, mm. nutritionally it's um, appropriate the for money, the group. Yeah. But it, you know, just the smell of the house on a Tuesday morning as we're getting ready for lunch is just. Yeah, it's part of course. And you can always be guaranteed of a feed. Uh, the, the other thing that, um, other part of chorus that we've talked about on the chorus voices before is the chorus kitchen, uh, which turns out a lot of meals for um, the old traditional Meals on Wheels way of, um, of getting food out there, but also runs a dining room and constantly producing uh, cupcakes and uh, other sorts of goodies for us across chorus and beyond. Um, it really is a, a hub in the organisation. And uh, we did have a conversation with Gigi Warren, who works in the chorus kitchen, about what goes on there. So can you tell me, when people get older, does their appetite change? Yes, it does. Uh, Generally, appetite's reduced because when you get older, due to illness or medical conditions, you find that you can't eat a variety of different things. Um, We call these dietary sort of restrictions. So Mm -hmm. the bad thing about dietary restrictions is it can really reduce the type of amount of food an older person can eat, and this can uh, increase their risk of malnutrition, so basically not eating enough. So does the social isolation affect how people eat, for example, by affecting their motivation to cook or shop? Yes, it it does. Um, It can really affect uh, the desire and motivation to actually eat. Um, And that's the the really good thing about the home-delivered meals is the friendship aspect um, with the volunteer. Um, It really shouldn't be underestimated. Um, It has been shown to have a positive impact on customer's well-being and the survival of older people. So it's basically just having the mere presence of, of someone else around is quite beneficial. And they actually did a, a study in 2014 on the um, qualitative experiences of people using Meals on Meals, and that was a, a big aspect um, mm, of it. Right. So how do older people ensure they are eating enough? That's a really tough one because older people don't actually feel that hungry um, and they don't want to eat. So when we get referrals in, it's normally from either the client themselves, the family or their doctor, who've actually noticed their clothing getting a lot looser and they might notice that they've actually lost quite a bit of weight. And that's the plus about getting the meals delivered. It's food that's there, it's already made, takes no effort and people are more inclined to actually eat it. 
does the appearance of food matter when considering um, nutritional needs? I think the appearance of food sort of matters to everyone, um, but I think especially more so with seniors because um, when you have a reduced appetite already, um, if you have food sitting in front of you, if it looks really appetising, it might increase your hunger. Um, and if it doesn't look very nice, you're not going to want to eat it. Right, so that's appearance. What about what about taste? How important is that for seniors? Yeah, taste, um, it's really funny because a lot of people think that um, older people want bland food. It's actually not the case. Did you know that when you get older, your taste buds start to to uh, disappear? I didn't know um, that, no. Yes, they start to decrease and they start to shrink. So it's really important that we add flavour to our food um, and we use herbs and spices for that. Um, so that's probably a little bit surprising for a lot of people to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Is fresh food best? Really, that depends on the customer's needs. So we can deliver fresh meals every day, um, but because they're fresh, we actually can't leave them at the door in an esky, um, so the customer needs to be home. So that's a big positive If because if they don't answer the door, we will check on them, we'll check their welfare, we'll contact their family or friends. It's peace of mind for their family members who might be really busy with their own family and they can't always see their mum and dad or their auntie and uncles. Um, but it can be negative if you have a very active senior. So someone who goes out, is very busy with appointments, um, they can't be home in the morning. So what we can do is we can deliver all their week's worth of meals on one day and because of that they'd have to be frozen. Um, we do snap freeze the meals so that ensures basically the best quality and taste. Mm. How do you make sure that the nutritional needs are met when, you, when you're preparing your meals or delivering your meals? Yep, so we always refer to the National Meal Guidelines issued by AMOA, which is Australian Meals on Wheels Association. Um, and those guidelines have very important recommendations about meals and nutrition. Great. So do you have any quick tips on how someone living at home could add nutrition to their meals? Yeah. Um, so certain nutrients like protein, calcium, vitamin D are needed in higher amounts as we get older, even though our energy requirements might fall. So having snacks on hand that are high in these nutrients is a really good start. So the best snacks would be things like a glass of milk, yogurt, cheese and nuts. There's a lot of different diets around these days. So what sorts of diets does Chorus Kitchen cater for? Um, well, we provide healthy homestyle meals um, and we are mindful to keep salt and sort of spiciness to a minimum. Um, they're the main areas of concern for our customers. We can also cater for diabetic and vegetarian diets. So even though we have a set daily menu, we do have alternative meals options available every day for customers with special dietary requirements. So for instance, some of our customers can't have uh, red meat. So on the days that we have red meat uh, on the menu, the chef always has a backup meal in place. Yeah, yeah I've seen a few um, a few different meals in your kitchen when I come on here on occasions and you've got quite a variety of different yummy looking foods. Yes, yeah. it's definitely dangerous working here. <laughs> There's too much food around. <laughs> So it's lovely to hear from Gigi at the Chorus Kitchen. I always enjoy going out there and meeting the team and seeing how they're going and particularly enjoy going out and delivering that, you know, more than just a meal. Yeah, it's a, it's a real uh, experience that's quite unique to Chorus, I guess, in lots of ways. But it's interesting just reflecting on, uh, you know, the purpose of our organisation, which is enabling people to live the life they choose. And we've, what we've done today is gone... Uh, for a bit of an exploration around a particular aspect of that, which is probably not something we talk about all that much, which is around nutrition. And there are lots of practical reasons why uh, particularly older people might um, be a bit low on the nutrition side right now. You know, it could, be, could become quite a big factor in their lives just because they find it difficult to get out or they have less confidence or ability to work in the kitchen. So, you know, what we need to think about as a society and as chorus is what we can do to help overcome those barriers um, to in, ensure people can continue to, to get a good feed and, and from there, um, you know, sort of other things become possible in life. And I think, you know, we're, we're not technical experts, so that, like mm. you, you touched on a couple of things that can get in the way, but also there's, you know, dementia and, and um, impacts on chewing and swallowing. So I think mm. seeking support is really helpful and understanding that there, there are uh, people out there that can help mm. um, identify perhaps some nutritional needs or, or gaps and, and how someone can um, overcome those or support someone else to overcome those. 
But I think more broadly, the, the key thing uh, for me is to recognise that getting the calories in is, is really just a stepping stone to living, uh, living a good life. And the real opportunity here is to say, we, you know, we're not feeding people. Um, you, you, you know, we feed goldfish, right? What we're doing is creating an opportunity for people to, to eat and share food. And if we sort of look a little bit more broadly than the pure service delivery sort of aspect of what we're trying to do, we will do something um, much more sort of um, important for folks, which is giving them an opportunity to, to, to connect um, and to feel that sense of joy and continue to feel that sense of joy that goes with eating that you and I talked about and, and, and uh, nostalgic about that, what that's meant for us in our lives. Um, so, you know, it really is, it's, it's nutrition and it's connection. And then you, you've got a real recipe for something special there. <laughs> Very good, very good. This is very rich uh, ground for puns. puns. <laughs> it's also maybe quite hungry, so we might wrap up yeah. the episode here. I'm going to have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Lou. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for listening to Chorus Voices, the podcast brought to you by Chorus. If you like our show and wanted to know more, check out our website at chorus.org.au and please leave a review. We'd love to hear your feedback and it helps others find us and enjoy the podcast as well. Join us next time for more inspiring stories and news from our community. Chorus, a fresh approach to community service.